Hello everyone, welcome to my presentation. I am Jason Che from KAIST. In this talk, I will present NTFuzz, which enables type-aware kernel fuzzing on Windows by using static binary analysis. This is a joint work with my colleagues, Kang Soo Kim and Dezin Lee, and my advisor, Sang Kil Cha. In modern operating systems, a user application does not directly access hardware resources. Instead, it makes a request to kernel by invoking a system call, or syscall in short. Then, the kernel code runs in a privileged mode to serve the request and interact with the hardware. Now, let's think about what would happen if there is a security bug in such a privileged kernel code. At the very least, a malicious attacker can incur denial of service by making the kernel to crash. In the worst case, the attacker can escalate one's privilege and take over the whole system. Because of their security impacts, Microsoft and Apple are respectively offering bounties up to $30,000 and $15,000 for kernel bugs. This highlights the importance of kernel security. Therefore, there has been a growing research interest on finding kernel bugs. There are various methodologies for finding bugs, but in this talk I will focus on fuzzing which is a popular technique due to its simplicity and effectiveness. As I previously mentioned, system call is the primary interface between the user and the kernel. Therefore, kernel fuzzers naturally target syscall interface. They generate a massive amount of system calls while randomly mutating their arguments. Recently, there has been a series of remarkable researches on syscall fuzzing. However, note that most of these fuzzers are for Linux, which is an open-source operating system. In open-source OSs, syscall type information is publicly known. Therefore, fuzzers can utilize such type information to provide appropriate arguments to syscalls. Many previous studies show that privileging type information in syscall fuzzing is indeed crucial for efficiency. But the problem is, how can you fuzz system calls in a closed-source OS like Windows? This is the research problem that our paper addresses. First, let's take a look at previous fuzzers for closed-source OSs. In fact, most of them targeted a specific subset of syscall interfaces. First, fuzzers often target publicly known syscalls. Even for closed-source OSs, certain syscall interfaces like IOCTR are publicly documented. Therefore, Fuzzles like IMF and IOCTR fuzzle target such known syscalls to find bugs. However, this limits the generality of syscall fuzzing. Second, fuzzles can rely on manually written harness code. In other words, a security expert needs to reverse engineer OS code to figure out how to provide arguments to a specific target syscall. Then, the expert should manually write a harness code which repeatedly calls the target syscall with mutated arguments. For example, KAFL takes this kind of approach. However, considering the fact that Windows has more than a thousand of system calls, such a manual approach is not scalable. Our goal is to enable general and automated syscall fuzzing in Windows. In other words, we do not target a specific syscall but target general syscall interfaces. Also, we want our system to run without harness code to enable automated syscall fuzzing. To achieve this goal, we bridge the information gap between the known interface and unknown interface by using static analysis. To further explain this idea, let's take a closer look at how user-level code interacts with kernel. Normally, User applications do not invoke system calls directly. Instead, they call documented API functions provided in the system libraries. Then, the API function passes through a chain of internal functions and reaches the final functions where a syscall is actually invoked. Our key idea is to analyze this function call chain. By tracing data flows from the documented APIs to undocumented syscalls, we can figure out which values are passed as syscall arguments and what they look like. In other words, we can infer the types of syscall arguments by statically analyzing system library files. In this talk, we will call these library files 
as system binaries. Note that we can infer the type of any syscall invoked from these system binaries. So, our approach can target a broad range of syscalls. Also, the static analysis process is automatic and does not require manual effort. With this idea, we design and implement anti-fuzz that enables type-aware syscall fuzzing on Windows. First, anti-fuzz takes in system binaries as input. It analyzes these binaries and obtains type information about syscalls. Then, the fuzzing module takes in this type information together with a set application in order to perform mutational fuzzing on syscall payload. As a final result, Antifuzz outputs a set of kernel bugs. However, analyzing system binaries is challenging due to their large scale. From now on, we will take a closer look at how our static analysis operates and deals with this challenge. Let's start by considering a real-world bug found by Antifuzz. The code is simplified for ease of explanation. The vulnerable syscall takes in a structure pointer as argument and processes its two fields, length and buffer. Note that a system call must sanitize the inputs to make sure not to access invalid memory space. Therefore, this function checks whether the length field is unexpectedly set to an odd number and whether the buffer points to an invalid memory range. The problem is that the log error function at line 5 does not raise an exception or a bug. So it will continue the execution to line 10 because the two checks are combined with else if closed at line 7. As a result, we can make the kernel to access arbitrary memory and crash by providing an odd number as length field. The first point I want to emphasize is that it is important to recognize the syscall argument type. If we blindly generate the argument of this syscall without considering its type, it is unlikely that the generated value points to a structure that we desire. Another notable point is that system calls are often related to API functions. For example, actually there was a user-level Windows API that internally invokes this system call. Therefore, we can infer the syscall type by analyzing API implementation in the system binaries. Unfortunately, there are several challenges that make this analysis difficult. First, note that our analysis actually runs in binary level, and it must be able to trace memory states in addition to register values. Therefore, tools that focus only on CFG construction, like IDA, cannot be used for our purpose. Moreover, note that the previous code was significantly simplified, and in real binaries, data flows often involve a chain of function calls. For example, this API can call functions to update memory, or it can pass its data to another function that internally invokes the syscall. This means we have to trace data flows across the function boundaries and perform an interprocedural analysis. Of course, such interprocedural analysis is not theoretically impossible, but the real problem is in the large scale of Windows system binaries. Even though we carefully examined and selected a core set of system binaries, we still have to analyze more than 12,000 of functions that are interconnected to each other. To the best of our knowledge, there is no existing binary analysis tool that can perform interprocedural analysis at this scale. So, how can we design such a scalable interprocedural analysis? To achieve the scalability, we use modular analysis. Let's consider this simplified core graph where top-level functions represent documented API functions and bottom-level functions represent the stop functions where syscall is involved. Let me first introduce the traditional global analysis. In global analysis, we start from the root node of the core graph and transitively follow the functions called by this node. Naturally, we have to visit and analyze the same function for multiple times, for example, in the case of F5. In contrast, modular analysis starts from the leaf nodes of the core graph. We analyze each function and compute a parameterized summary of the function 
that can be concretized later. Then, when we analyze the colors of the already visited functions, we reuse these summaries instead of analyzing the core list again. Therefore, modular analysis can avoid repetitive computation, but this comes at the price of sacrificing soundness. For example, it cannot soundly summarize functions when there is a cycle in the core graph. However, note that our purpose is not in verifying programs, but in finding practical type information to assist fuzzing. Therefore, our analysis does not have to be fully sound. In the evaluation, we could confirm that our analysis can collect meaningful type information, even though it sacrifices soundness in certain points. Modular analysis itself is not a novel idea, but applying it at a binary level is challenging. Due to the time limitation, I will not discuss all the details in this talk. So please refer to our paper for more details about our novel analysis design and how it enables modular analysis on binary code. So far, I have described the static analysis module of NTFuzz. Now, I will briefly introduce the fuzzing module which reverses the Cisco type information obtained from our static analyzer. We use hooking-based fuzzing to fuzz Windows kernel with the type information we obtained. We first launch a seed application to spawn a sequence of well-formed syscalls. Then, we intercept these syscalls and perform a type-aware mutation by utilizing the provided type information. For example, on pointer type arguments, we have to traverse into their content and perform mutation recursively. Now, I will present the evaluation result of NTFAS. In this talk, I will focus on two research questions. First, we evaluate the impact of type awareness on fuzzing. Second, we evaluate how effective is NTFAS in finding previously unknown kernel bugs. And you can find more experiment results in the paper if you're interested. To evaluate the impact of type awareness, we used Windows 10 released in April 2018, which has more number of confirmed bugs than the latest version. To see if Antifas can find previously unknown bugs, we used Windows 10 released in January 2020, which was the latest version at the time of our research. We used 8 seed applications for hooking-based fuzzing and ran Antifas for 48 hours on each application. First, we compared the number of found crashes with and without type information. The graph shows the number of total and unique crashes found over time. We repeated the experiment for five times and plotted the average here. We could confirm that Antifas finds 1.7 times more unique crashes when it utilized type information obtained from the static analysis. Next, we evaluate the effectiveness of Antifuzz in the latest Windows 10 and compare Antifuzz against other groups. We examined many kernel fuzzles available for Windows, but in the end, we could compare Antifuzz against empty core and IOCTR fuzzle only. We manually classified the found crashes into unique bugs and counted their number. When we repeated the experiment for five times, Antifuzz found about eight unique bugs in average and outperformed other tools. When we collected all the bugs found during this experiment, Antifuzz found 11 bugs from the latest Windows 10, and 4 of the bugs were assigned CVEs. Moreover, these CVEs were rewarded with $25,000 of bounties in total due to their critical security impacts. This highlights the practical impact of Antifuzz on real world. We believe there are several promising directions for future work. First, we can integrate the Cisco type information with generational or coverage-based fuzzing as well. Also, we can extend our static analysis to support more complex types like Union. Lastly, in this work, we only analyzed user-level code, but we can further complement the type information by analyzing kernel code as well. To support open science, we will release the source code of Antifuzz on GitHub in July. If you're interested, please click the stars and watch our repository for the updates.
This is the end of my talk, and thank you for listening.